Hello, I'm Sarah from Allcraft TV. I usually do crochet tutorials, but I thought I would try something new. I have always wanted to make those blankets out of roving that you see all over the internet. And considering I have never knitted in my life, this hand knitted blanket is the closest I will get for a while. If you are like me and have never knitted, then this is perfect because it is so easy to make and you get that lovely knit stitch look. My local craft store Spotlight has some roving in stock, so I thought I would purchase some and give it a go. It is Moda Vera Bump. It's 100% acrylic and it's really soft. You could use merino roving, but that is super expensive. And considering I wanted to give it a go, I thought I would use something less expensive. This ball is one kilogram and you can see that it's quite large and it has 50 meters in one ball. And for my single blanket or throw, I used 100 meters. The care instructions say gentle wash and dry flat, but I personally wouldn't wash it because you could lose the appearance of the roving or it could come undone. If you don't want to use roving, you can use super bulky yarn or add multiple strands together and use them as one strand. That way your blanket won't be as delicate. But I really wanted to buy some roving and have a go at making a hand knitted blanket using roving. The good thing about this blanket is that you only need your hands and your chosen yarn. So you don't have to buy extra stuff like knitting needles, which is great if you aren't sure if you want to take up knitting or if you just want to make this project. This here is the beginning of the roving and you can see it is not as pulled apart. It looks twisted, which is not how most roving comes. So that is good because it is already quite strong and doesn't rip apart when I pull at it. To begin, we need to make a slip knot. So fold the yarn over like this to make a loop and grab the yarn attached to the ball and pull it through the loop. and pull tight to make a slip knot. I like to keep my loops short so that the blanket isn't loose and doesn't look holy, but that is just a personal preference. You can make your loops as big or as small as you want. Grab the yarn that is attached to the ball and lay it underneath the loop from the slip knot. Open up the loop and pull the yarn through to make another loop and a chain one. Go through the new loop and grab the yarn and pull the yarn through to make your second chain. Go through the new loop, grab the yarn and pull the yarn through for your third chain and a new loop. Go through the loop, grab the yarn and pull the yarn through for your fourth chain. Go through the loop, grab the yarn, pull the yarn through to make your fifth chain. You can see that my chains are relatively tight, but still loose enough to pull the yarn through. So I have one, two, three, four, and five chains. And this here becomes your first loop for the first row. This is just a small version of the blanket or throw that I made, but you can keep chaining until you have your desired width. But I did a total of 12 chains for my single blanket or throw. When it comes to doing the ends, I like to make them a little bit tighter as well because they tend to be a bit more delicate. So I try to keep my loop shorter, but again, that's a personal preference. Because this loop counts as the first loop for row one, we need to go into the second chain. Grab the yarn attached to the ball from behind and pull the yarn through from back to front through the chain to make a new loop. Try and keep your loops the same length as well. Go into the next chain, grab the yarn and pull the yarn from the back to the front through the chain to make a loop.
go into your next chain, grab the yarn and pull it from the back to the front through the chain to make a new loop. And you just repeat this all the way along your chain. Go into the last chain, grab the yarn and pull the yarn through the chain to make a loop. So we now have one, two, three, four, five loops from the five chains that we started with. If you added more chains, you will have more loops. Now we are working in the opposite direction. So we need to grab the yarn attached to the ball from behind the loop and bring it in through from back to front through the loop to make a new loop. And you can see that we've just made the V, which is a classic knit stitch look. Go through the second loop, grab the yarn from the back and push it forward through the loop to make a new loop. Go through the next loop, grab the yarn and pull the yarn from the back in through the loop to make a new loop. Go through the next loop, grab the yarn and pull the yarn from the back in through the loop to make a new loop. And then this is the loop created from doing the chain, but it is the exact same method. So grab the yarn and pull it through the loop, going from the back to the front. And that has created your first row. For the next row, we are working from this loop here to this loop. So we are going in the opposite direction that we just worked in. Grab your yarn attached to the ball open up the first loop on the row which is the last loop that we just did and bring the yarn from the back in through the loop to make another loop. Now we have two V's. Now we grab the yarn from the back and pull that through the next loop to make a new loop for the next row. Now grab the yarn from the back and pull that through the next loop to make a new loop and your next V stitch. And you just repeat that all the way along your row. So just continue doing that all the way to the end. And for the last loop, pull the yarn from the back in through the loop to make a new loop. Now we have two Vs or the knit stitch on each of these rows at the front of the work. And this is what the back of the work looks like as well. If you chained more than five, you will have more starting chains than me. So that means you will need to do more stitches in each row. Don't forget for a blanket, you will need your starting chain to be a lot longer than what mine was. I am just doing a small sample to show you the pattern and so that it will also fit in the camera. To make it longer, you just need to repeat the pattern. So you can scroll back on the video to watch it again. So just repeat this second row that we just did of basically grabbing the yarn and pulling it through the loops to make a new loop and a V stitch. But make sure you go in opposite ways of what you did each row. And when you get to your desired length and you want to finish your project, you will need to cast off the stitches.
This here is my single blanket or throw. There are 12 of these Vs or knit stitch in a row. To be able to cast up, we need to start from this way and go this way because we need to start where the yarn is actually attached. I like to make one more loop to start at the beginning of the cast off. So to do that, grab the loop and pull the yarn through to make a new loop, like what you've been doing to start every row. Now grab this first loop and the second loop, put them together side by side like this. Grab the yarn, open up the loops, and pull the yarn through both loops to make a new loop. You have just cast off your first few stitches. Grab this new loop that you just made and put that loop next to this loop next to it, so this second loop. Put them together side by side and with the strand Pull that strand of yarn through both loops to make a new loop. Starting from the front and pulling it in through the back. Now grab the new loop and the loop next to it and pull the strand of yarn going from the front to the back through both loops to make a new loop. To finish casting off the rest of the stitches you just need to repeat this pattern all the way to the end of the loops. Now grab the new loop and the loop next to it and pull the strand of yarn going from the front to the back through both loops to make a new loop. When you get to the end, you will have this new loop and the loop from your last stitch. So put them together like this, grab the yarn and pull the yarn through the loops to make a new loop. If you find that it looks too tight at the end or is bunched together, just undo it gently and make your loops longer. And then cast off again and it should make your blanket a bit more of a rectangle without any bunching. When you finish casting off, you will have this nice finished knit stitch look. To secure the yarn, there are a few different ways that you can do this. If you have a felting tool, you can felt the end into the blanket, which is probably the better way and the more secure way of doing it. But I didn't buy one because they are expensive and I wanted to just get this video out there. So I will just be weaving in my ends. To secure the work, pull all the remaining yarn through to make a knot. Flip the work to the wrong side or the back and start weaving in the yarn at the back of the work. Through these little loops and just continue to do that until you are happy with how secure it is. You can see that it doesn't make a difference to the front of the blanket, but just make sure you are evenly doing it throughout the blanket so that there aren't any thick patches where you've weaved it in. Just cut the remaining yarn off if there is any leftover yarn. And now you have finished your blanket or throw. If you did a total of 12 chains like me and used 100 meters of roving, your throw should measure approximately 134 centimeters in length 
and 78 centimeters wide. If you chained more to begin with, you will obviously use more roving or yarn for your blanket, but it will be a lot wider and longer and so much warmer. I hope you enjoyed this hand knitted blanket tutorial. I know it's not what I usually do, but I have always wanted to make one. So I thought why not do a YouTube tutorial as well to show you how to hand knit. If you don't want to use roving, you can still get the knit look using super bulky weighted yarn. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit the like and subscribe button for more Allcraft TV tutorials. I hope you have an amazing day and I also hope to see you next time.